hello team and welcome back to the channel so before we start i would recommend you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already you will find tons of amazing hands-on videos on devops and cloud devops along with the real-time scenarios so make sure to check it out also team for those who are preparing for devops batch 5 is starting from 18th of may which is after two weeks and this batch is completely real-time oriented so whatever i'm going to teach whatever i'm going to implement everything is going to be real time in the same way that we do in companies as of now i have supported more than 31 projects and i have seen lots of real time environments production environment and everything and that's what i'm going to teach you explain you how they exist how they are prepared and everything else as well along with the documentation and hands on implementation so make sure to check it out it's devsecops plus cloud devops so make sure to check out also team for those who want to have one to one connect either you can schedule a top mid call but if you want a quick uh, like one to one connect you can just follow me on instagram you can have a direct call with me uh, like as per the availability we can have a quick connect on instagram so make sure to uh, check it out as well now talking about today's video so today's video going to be really useful for people who are directly preparing for interviews because uh, one of the most common questions that has been asked in interviews is like what are the stages in your pipeline that you have written and that's what i'm going to explain along with the scenario so that you can easily explain the same thing to interviewer to showcase your knowledge in pipeline stages okay now so also team there are tons of stages uh, some of them you might not have heard about but yeah make sure to watch it till end so that you understand which stage to say first why it is first so and so so make sure to check it out okay now let's consider a scenario so we have a application or a website of a client okay after a certain time client says ki i want to make some changes to this application or i want to add some feature now feature can be anything it can be a button it can be change in background color it can be addition of a separate section on the website all those things can be a feature so client says whatever his description is there about the feature what it is he raises a jira ticket in that jira ticket he will mention all the details ki okay this is the feature this is the new feature that needs to be added in the application okay once the jira ticket has been raised a developer will assign that ticket to either himself or to someone else based on whoever is available now whoever that ticket is assigned to the, that developer will start writing the source code for that new feature okay now while writing the new feature uh, the code of the new feature developer once he has written he is going to test that code in his local machine or in his office laptop okay just to confirm uh, that okay the source code that he has written is working fine so once he has tested that piece of code in his local machine and it is running fine he is going to push it to github repository and now pushing to github repository is not going to happen directly what he is going to do he is going to raise a branch he is going to create a branch from dev branch okay he is going to create a feature branch okay and he is going to push his code new code in the feature branch okay now that feature branch code is supposed to be merged back into dev branch right but merging also does not happen directly what he is going to do he is going to raise a pull request once the pull request is add, uh, raised a reviewer will be added in the pull request reviewer can be someone like senior person of the project or some architect whose task is to verify the changes added in the feature branch once the reviewer is uh, satisfied that okay these changes are correct he is going to approve the merge and the new code that is written by developer is going to be merged back to dev branch okay now as soon as the code is merged now from here as a devops engineer our task is going to get started okay now so we will uh, if there is no pipeline we are going to create a pipeline from scratch but if a pipeline already existing we are simply going to trigger it okay now let's talk about the stages in the pipeline so first step that is going to happen once the code is pushed is that we are going to clone the basically the pipeline is going to create a local copy of the source code inside jenkins workspace or whichever cicd tool you are using okay a local copy is created of the source code inside the workspace so that that copy can be used for performing all the actions okay so first step is going to be git checkout after that what we are going to do we are going to download the application dependencies what are dependencies dependencies are some supporting files that are needed to make sure that application runs well now where exactly those dependencies are defined right so in case of java based projects we'll be having a file known as pom.xml which contains all the information about dependencies even a build tool when we run the command to install dependencies a build tool is going to check the dependent uh, pom.xml and download all the dependencies mentioned there 
Similarly, if you are working with a Node.js based application, those dependencies are mentioned in a file known as package.json. If you are working with a .NET based project, those dependencies will be defined in the .csproj files. Okay. So second step would be to download the dependencies, right? After we have done that, the next step would be to run the unit test cases for the application. Okay. Now you might be thinking okay, why we are not running the compile, compile, compilation of the code separately because once we run the unit test cases, compilation will be done automatically. So we don't need to separately run compilation, right? One more question. One more very important question is that ki, why do we need to run unit test cases before sonar cube and not after it? Because recently I saw some videos on YouTube, people were just saying ki, first run sonar cube, then run test cases. No, it does not work that way. Now let me explain you why we should run unit test cases before sonar cube. Okay. So sonar cube is supposed to perform two tasks, code quality check and code coverage. Okay. Now code quality check is basically used to find out issues in the code like bugs, code smell, vulnerabilities, or any other issue in the source code that can be find out by just accessing the source code, right? Sonar cube can do that. But for the code coverage, sonar, basically, you know, what is code coverage? Code coverage is basically, uh, the amount the percentage of the code that is covered after running the test cases okay so how does so sonar cube is going to find code coverage so code coverage is found out once uh, once we have executed the test cases there is a report test cases report that report is shared to sonar cube and based on that report it generates the code coverage now you can understand if there is no report how can sonar cube generate the uh, code coverage right so in order to make sure that we have the test cases report, test cases execution report, we first execute the test cases and then we run the sonar cube analysis so that once we execute the test cases, that report will be generated, which will be shared to sonar cube and then sonar cube can generate the code coverage. Okay. That's why we had need to run test cases first. After the sonar cube stage is completed, we are going to perform vulnerability scan. Okay. That can be done using a trivia tool is like open source tool which can be used so it is it, its task is to find out commonly known vulnerabilities in the application in the application dependencies okay so for that we can use trivi it's completely free and it's very use, easy to use okay so basically you know uh, what kind of issues trivi is going to find out cve which is short for com common vulnerabilities and exposures which are publicly known so those kind of issues in our dependencies trivi is going to find out Okay. For example, like if any dependencies that we are going to use, if it is outdated, if it is vulnerable, so those kind of issues will be found out by Trivi and Trivi will suggest, a, suggest us a, like a measure for it. Measure means like key, what we can do to avoid this, right? So that also will be provided by Trivi. After that, we are going to build or package the application. So now basically when I say build the or package the application, what we do, we package dependencies along with the application to generate a executable application artifact. Now, for example, artifact can be in different formats. For example, if you are working with Java based application, artifact will be in jar or var format, right? Let's say I ran the, like developer push the source code to GitHub. We ran the pipeline and we'll build the application. We got the artifact in jar format, right? But let's say a, a developer added some new code and then we ran the pipeline then we build the application now this artif second artifact it's going to be different basically there are two versions of the artifact right so how do we manage these versions so for that we have a tool known as nexus repository so basically what we can do having multiple artifacts we can push those artifacts to nexus repository so that we can maintain multiple versions of the artifact okay that is known as artifact management also so once we have the artifact ready push to nexus next what we can do we can write a docker file to build the docker image right so for again once we uh, like write the docker file build the docker image we need to make sure that it is tagged properly tagged means tagging means like we define which version is this docker image right so make sure we need to make sure that after building the image we are tagging it as well okay so after tagging is done we uh, we cannot directly push the docker image to a registry we need to make sure that we are scanning the docker image now best part is that trivi can also be used to scan a docker image okay so uh, because you know in docker image also there could be vulnerabilities based on the base image that we are using or the application artifact based on those things we can have issues so we can use trivi to scan the docker image find out vulnerabilities if we are able to fix it we will immediately fix it once that is done, what we can do, we can push our uh, Docker image to a registry. 
generally for self learning we can push it to docker hub repository but when we talk about in companies we are going to push the docker image to a private registry okay once we have pushed it to private registry next we need to make sure that our yaml manifest files are modified to have the whichever version we want to deploy so that docker image is defined in our yaml manifest files for the kubernetes okay so after that like using those yaml manifest files we can deploy the application to kubernetes right also team before we deploy once like during the kubernetes setup we can use security tools like cube audit to scan our to perform a security scan on our cluster as well to make make sure that it is secure okay and once like, once that is done we can deploy the application to kubernetes now once the application is deployed next step would be to perform penetration testing penetration testing uh, basically what it does it's going to attack the application to find out vulnerability points where exactly this application is vulnerable once we have those locations or once we have those points developers along with the devops engineers we can fix it once it is fixed then then the application is good right so after application is deployed we are going to perform OASP zap zap is short for z attack proxy okay which is used for penetration testing once that is done then we can get a a uh, post actions notification this is like os zap is going to be the last stage after that we are going to receive a notification mail either on our gmail or on our outlook based on whatever we have configured okay so that email will confirm if the application like deployed successfully if the pipeline is successful or not if it is failed or whatever we can receive that in notification mail and this is how the complete stages in a pipeline exist these are the stages that in a pipeline exist and these are the exact stages that you are going to explain to the uh, interviewer also team once application is deployed we can monitor it using grafana and prometheus two kinds of like most uh, important monitoring that we have are two kinds one is system level monitoring so whichever server our application is running on we can monitor the server usage of different resources like ram cpu and all those things okay after that what we can do we can monitor the traffic also coming and going into the application that also we can monitor so these two kind of monitoring can be done okay and also like you know system level monitoring can also be done on jenkins or uh, sonar cube servers because they are also servers running on some uh, like uh, some machine having some, like using some kind of resources some amount of cpu ram and all those things so we can monitor those as well okay and this is the exact uh, like real time corporate pipeline stages that you need to explain to your interviews okay and i really hope that it was useful and again team for those who are uh, preparing for devops interviews you can just join batch 5 i can dedicatedly support you help you with qualifying the interview and that will be really useful okay so make sure to check it out all the links will be in the description okay see so i hope this was really useful for you so thanks for watching and have a nice day